Hello, Internet. So last year, I frequently found myself wishing I knew the temperature of the community pool. It's kind of a drag to, you know, get your kid all dressed up and load up the red wagon and walk all the way over there. And then you realize that it's a little bit too cold to be comfortable. So I kind of think about this every so often. And I thought, you know, it'd be really nice if you could just maybe go to the community website or something, check it on your phone and just see what the temperature was. So, uh, you know, I thought there was a bunch of ways you could do this. You could have a, a floating temperature probe. You could drill into the plumbing, maybe near the pump, so that you're actually measuring the temperature of the water as it's pumping by. Uh, but I thought, you know, another thing that you could try is you could try one of these non-contact thermometers. So the sensor is actually a thermopile. So I, I figured I'd give that a shot. I... Um, I got one of these thermopiles, That's, it's just this kind of silver part on the end. And then I uh, got a particle photon, this is a Wi-Fi enabled 120 megahertz ARM microcontroller. Uh, pretty handy little thing, but so it, it's got Wi-Fi built in, so it just makes things a lot easier for prototyping stuff. So I set it up so that it would wake up every 15 minutes, take a reading, and then blast it up to the web. I can check that from my phone. Um, currently, the battery lasts a few weeks. You know, that's you. You really want to shoot for like a year or something like that. But you could, you could hit that if you put a solar panel on it, probably. Um, so, I one of the concerns that everyone has, of course, initially is, well, water is very shiny. Is it going to be able to measure the temperature of the water using one of these thermopiles? And I wasn't sure. Uh, but it turns out, there. It, if you look online, there's a number of sources that say the, the infrared emissivity of, of water is extremely high. So what that means is when you point a non-contact thermometer at water, you are measuring the temperature of the water as opposed to uh, something reflecting off of it. So it's, it's around like 98%, sometimes a little more, a little less. Uh, but this is... This is there's some variation, but for the most part, this is regardless of whether it's fresh water, salt water, uh, even ice and snow are still very high, a little lower, but still very, very high. Uh, so that seemed pretty promising. Um, I one, one thing that's nice about this type of sensor is that it doesn't have a range per se. That's the next question people always ask. It just has a field of view. And so it, it it's kind of like it's looking through this cone and it's going to re report the average temperature across that whole cone for the most part. So, uh, so rather than sticking a single probe in one corner of a pool that's maybe hotter than the, you know, something next to it, uh, you know, or maybe a kid comes along and pees next to the temperature probe or something, you know, uh, it, it, it would be fairly insensitive to that kind of thing because you can... By, by putting it far enough away, you can cover a very large area. So this seemed pretty promising. Um, I, I did a quick search on what what is available right now if I wanted to just buy this. Um, they don't have something that uses a non-contact thermometer and, and sends it out over Wi-Fi. There's a number of floats that have a temperature probe in them, of course. Uh, drawback of that for a community pool is that some five-year-old kid can grab it and run off with it, or, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's a kind of in the way if you have a pool party or something. So um, I, I did find one. It's a float that uses Bluetooth, but that really isn't the same thing as Wi-Fi. I can't check that from work, you know. Um, so my neighbor actually has a pool. He just moved in, and he says he has got a temperature probe that he can use to check the temperature of his pool. And they built that in. So, um, you know, I haven't come across a quick add-on unit, but clearly they, you know, when you're building your own pool, you can, they, they've got some, some nicer equipment that they can hook you up with. But, uh, so anyway, it seemed like this wasn't done and it was maybe, maybe worth investigating. Uh, so I did some tests. I, I mocked up this quick enclosure. I found this box model on Thingiverse. Um, put the sensor in there, did some tests. I left it, you know, 24 hours at the pool, and I've done a whole bunch of tests around looking at grass and roofs and different stuff. Um, in general, I'd say it works pretty well. It definitely follows the trends. 
Uh, I may do a, another data capture where I actually do have a temperature probe that's logging alongside the thermopile data. Uh, I have used a temperature probe and looked at things like a bathtub with a fan blowing across it and things like that. Um, so in general, it looks pretty good. The, the wind does have an effect. Uh, if you look at the plot over a day at the pool, you, you could see maybe like two or three degree fluctuations, um, but it did follow the trends pretty well. So um, the sensitivity to wind may be what kills it, but mainly I just wanted to try this out and it was an interesting idea and you know I, I hadn't built anything in a while. So, um, so anyway, that's what I did. Um, I, I, it's been kind of interesting learning a little more about these sensors and um, I'm not sure whether this is going to be worth actually you know petitioning to be installed uh, looking down on the pool or something like that from a nearby roof but uh, you know it was fun to try at the very least and that is all <laughs>